I'm Tiffany and this is Towering TBR. Well, welcome! This is the third week of the Magical Readathon vlog. If you haven't watched them already, I will link part one and part two up in the cards. Um, so yeah, last night I decided to tackle another book that wasn't on my TBR, Seek You by Kristen Radka. This was in a really interesting graphic nonfiction about loneliness. And one of the first things that I read in this book it says, Loneliness is often exacerbated by a perception that one is lonely while everyone else is connected. It's exaggerated by a sensation of feeling on the outside, something that others seem to be in on, a family, a couple, a friendship, a joke. And I immediately thought of The Office and Michael Scott when he says that he's always wanted to be part of an in-joke. And if I can find it, I'll, I'll put it up because it's quite funny. But yeah, this book was incredibly impactful. I think um, because, of, because of the pandemic, uh, you know, we were all in isolation and a lot of us probably experienced loneliness and she talks about loneliness as a biological trait when it was harmful for people to be on the outside of the group. Um, we're, we are a social species and, um, you know, someone getting left out might not have access to food or better shelter or whatever and so that's why it's such a a strong emotion to be lonely and to feel left out um yeah she talked about people who after they've been on the outs for a while that they start to perceive any human interaction as a potential threat um, she talked about mass shooters and how they're often called loners and um, how they can start to perceive people as uh, slighting them or, or being rude to them even when those things aren't happening. They just have like a heightened sense of awareness. This was just fascinating. She also talked about a psychological study that was done on rhesus monkeys and they, the babies were separated from their mothers and isolated um, and then given facsimiles of like basically dolls that could represent their mother and how, how they basically couldn't really socialize after being in isolation for so long. And there was so much brought up in this book and I think it's amazing and I would love if this would just like create five more books even more in depth on all the subjects that she talked about but this was fabulous even though the art style I'll give you an example even though the art style wasn't super special in my opinion I'm still giving this five stars because this, this was just a really impactful time for me to read this, and um, yeah, now I want to pick up her other book because this was just so well done. I have also started on my Kindle um, the book Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau. This is about Mary Jane. She's 14 in 1975, and she's growing up with a really strict mother and a very absent father. I shouldn't say absent, more indifferent. He's there, he just doesn't talk to her or take interest in her. And so she gets a job during the summer watching um, a five-year-old girl called Izzy and her mother is impressed because the, the father of this family is a doctor and we find out that he's a psychologist and he is going to have a rock star who is um, some sort of addict going through um, withdrawals and he's 
going to be moving in with the doctor so that they can kind of have really intense sessions all the time. And he's married to a movie star, and so she's there as well. And yeah, so far Mary Jane is just loving being part of this family. It's so different from her own, and they're allowed to do things that she's not allowed to do, and they talk about subjects that she just thinks her parents would never discuss, like sex and drugs. And it's just, it's a really easy read, and I'm really enjoying it. So I'm about, I think, 99 pages in to about a 300-ish page book, so I'm a good chunk in there, and yeah, I'm just, I'm loving it, so really great books to start off week three. All right, I think that's it. I will update you when I have read more. Hey, so I have read some more of Mary Jane. I'm about two-thirds of the way through, and yeah, this is just such a fun read. Um, Mary Jane gets, uh, so much more responsibility and privileges at the house where she's babysitting. Uh, her mother still treats her like she's a little girl and so it's really quite exciting for Mary Jane to be uh, allowed to, to do things, to cook dinner, uh, to take care of a child, to... and I can just see why this would be a great haven for a girl growing up in a really strict environment. Uh, they have now gone on a beach trip and yeah I mean this is just a fun and very easy to read book. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, it's interesting to see Mary Jane as she kind of learns things that maybe her mother doesn't want her to learn about and to just no longer be ignorant and childlike and it is such a fun easy read and so I'm really enjoying it. I have also picked up A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Lengel. Uh, this is for the challenge to read a childhood favorite and I'm so glad I'm rereading this because I absolutely can't remember anything from it. I have read about 63 pages and so far this is a story about Meg and her family and her father has gone missing on a top secret mission and with the help of a high school kid and her younger brother and these three crazy women she knows nothing about uh, they decide to go on a trip to find her father and that's where I'm at so far I, there's definitely something about the younger brother that is magical or different. Um, really enjoying it. Glad I'm rereading it because I retained nothing from my childhood read of this book. So, yeah, I will probably finish both of these in the next day or two and really gonna buckle down and try and knock off some of those prompts because... I've just been allowing my mood to pick my books too much lately. So I will update you when I read more. Okay, so I have now finished Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau. And I think it's a really fun and easy to read story. Um, I think in my TBR, I said that I'd heard it compared to Daisy Jones and the Six. And I really think that's an apt comparison. It's about musicians and um, the harm that drugs can do and that kind of lifestyle and it's a coming of age story as well and I just all around really enjoyed it and gave it a four stars. I have also finished A Wrinkle in Time by Mad Langle and I don't know why I liked this as a child. Um, because it's a classic and because it's been around so long, I really thought that I could read it as an adult and really enjoy it. But I think I'm going to give it three stars because the main character, Meg, is super whiny. And she was just really anno an annoying character 
She's like, let's find my dad, let's find my dad. But then like, wouldn't offer any like plans or anything. She was just kind of a complainer. And there's somebody at the door. Okay, let's try that again. So I picked up a wrinkle in time. Um, I think it is good for children. I think that the story is interesting. But for me, I just couldn't get over the whiny protagonist. And I felt like... I don't know. It's unspecified how old she is. We know she's older than 10 and probably younger than 14. But, yeah. She detracted from the story. But, However, that does mean I have checked off another prompt, which was to read a childhood favorite. I have also started reading on my Kindle... The Invisible Kingdom, which is my light blue book, and I'm already enjoying this really quite a lot. Um, as I've mentioned before, I have multiple chronic illnesses, and she has talked a lot about her own journey of becoming sick and then seeming to get better and having these like flare ups where she gets a lot worse. And I'm just really identifying with her and her experiences ring true to my experiences as well so highly enjoying that but it's not a book that I can easily binge so even though it's fairly short it, I will probably take a few days to read it. I am planning on picking up Kindred next for my one word prompt um, so yeah that's what I'm looking forward to in the future. I will come back to you when I've read more. Bye. now read 133 pages of The Invisible Kingdom by Megan O'Rourke and I have um, pulled some quotes that I think are really representative of this text and, and why I am relating to it so much. Um, one of them starts, this was why I wanted others to see what was happening to me, to know that I was locked away in a room alone. If they knew, perhaps someone could find a way to get me out. Instead, I feared I would be relegated to a world of the imaginary ill, exiled in the invisible kingdom from which I was never allowed passage. Um, what she's talking about is that so many people and so many doctors and medical professionals often disbelieve women when they talk about their pain or they think it's an over-exaggeration. And this lack of feeling seen and understood is another isolating factor of chronic illness. There was a couple other quotes that I wanted to pull as well. She is a very um, controlling person. She likes to be in control. And she says, without data or answers, I had to make room for reality that included my near lack of control. I still don't have definitive answers, but gradually, peeling away uncertainty layer by layer, I arrived at what feels, to me at least, like a truth I can live with. Um, so far, she's been talking about her journey in getting a diagnosis. Um, she starts off the book getting a Hashimoto's diagnosis, which is um, an autoimmune condition that makes your thyroid attack your body. and because it's doing that, it doesn't have enough of that thyroid control and uh, can cause quite a bit of fatigue. Um, this is one of the chronic illnesses I have. And she also talked about how long COVID is really bringing into the forefront um, the idea of chronic illness, that maybe chronic illness is started by a virus and people just react differently like and now that there's more emphasis on long COVID she's hoping that that means that there will be more study of
chronic illness and to try and um, find better ways to manage pain and fatigue. That is, that is the scary part of having chronic illnesses that are not well understood is they don't know what to do. They don't know how to help you and it can be really, really isolating. Uh, one last quote that I wanted to talk um, about. Um, she talks about how mental illness and physical illness can be intertwined and that sometimes when doctors don't know what is wrong, they will tell you to seek mental help, thinking that it is a psychological problem. And she wrote, counseling plays a crucial supportive role in the management of chronic illness which can bring depression with it, either as a consequence of living with the illness or indeed as a feature of the illness itself. Inflammatory and autoimmune conditions uh, can affect the brain causing, neuropsych causing neuropsychiatric disease along with many other symptoms. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's definitely true in my case. I have been living with chronic illness since my early 20s and yeah, my mental health, sometimes it's a chicken and an egg kind of story, like which one came first, the declining mental health or the declining physical health, which then brought on maybe the other one. This book is also getting very sciencey. That is probably the one thing that I think is a drawback for it. I, I, I don't necessarily care about the intricacies of the genetics and specific DNA that might cause one particular uh, symptom of a, of a disease. Um, and so that part is kind of hard to keep going because it's it's just more sciencey than I typically like to read. But so far I'm really enjoying this. I'm really feeling seen and understood and I think that if you are a person with chronic illnesses or you love a person who has chronic illnesses I think this would be a really important book for you to pick up because she has a way of verbalizing in concise ways the specific trauma that comes with not being able to live and use your body fully like able-bodied people can and yeah I just I think this is a really good book and I'm, I'm really enjoying it I am about a third of the way through so probably do one more update but I don't have any more to add so I will stop here Okay, so this is going to be my last clip for week three, um, and unfortunately I'm going to be ending a little bit on a cliffhanger since one of the books I'm still in the middle of. So the book that I'm still in the middle of is on my Kindle, it's The Invisible Kingdom. Um, I always read nonfiction slower, unless it's a memoir. Um, but yeah, I haven't progressed any further in that, I think I'm on chapter four. And that's going to carry into the next week since I'm still working on it. The book I haven't spoken about at all that I have finished is Kindred. I had a couple of bad days and was able to listen to the audiobook but not able to film and share my thoughts. So Kindred was pretty much everything I, I thought it would be. Um, it's about a woman called Dana in the 1970s who unwillingly travels back in time to slavery times and every time she does there's a someone in trouble that she has to save and yeah the, the treatment of slaves like from her more modern perspective is just horrific and she endures so many things trigger warnings for the R word and the N word, quite a few, and uh, trigger warnings for rape um, and violence. So um, yeah, this was really good and I'm glad I read it. I 
tried to read one of her other books, The Parable of the Sower, and I just really, it was too grim and too dark. And I was nervous this might be as well, but it was just fantastic. I gave it four stars. I think the reason that I couldn't give it five stars is because Dana was a very passive character and um, yeah, she, she acted in ways that really surprised me. So uh, yeah, four stars. And then yeah, next week I will be hopefully finishing The Invisible Kingdom and also picking up Queenie. That's my last book that I have to read for the prompts. So that's what I'm going to be going into next week with. Thank you so much for joining me and let me know if you have any thoughts on these books or what you're reading or just anything you want to talk about. Thank you. Bye.